Hi guys, my crew here. This is my guide on AFK Viawatch. In this guide, I show you how to get a consistent 1.5 million experience an hour and 5 mil GP an hour, which can go even higher than this if you be a bit less AFK. I speak about my setup and how to do it all in this guide, so let's get right into it. Starting this video off with the requirements as always. You need Mauritania Legs 4 for the plus 50% prayer and fire making XP to get these XP rates. This means you need to do the elite Mauritania task, which is the hardest part of this. The second hardest part is the Sun Spear from the River of Blood quest. This is a fairly long quest line, but it's 100% worth it again. They're the two big, big requirements for this method. Other than that, you want curses from Temple at Centerstin with 92 prayer for Soul Split. Only other thing I would add is invention perks are very, very helpful. If you have invention, getting some decent perks or even just scavenging and stuff is super useful here. Right, so now on to the setup. When it comes to the gear and inventory setup, my friend Red Hen made this. It's a nice thing to include here so you guys can maybe screenshot it or pause the video here whenever you need to double check if you're missing anything. Let me break down what this all means. We have our inventory and our worn inventory. In the inventory, it just has all of the different main things you're going to pick up. Then you can summon that pack gag pouch and you'll have one free inventory space to do some alkin or whatever you need to do. You can also bank the Draken's medallion in the bank as well. That way you'll have two inventory spaces. When it comes to the worn inventory, you want to take the best gear that's cost effective and that's masterwork. But it's very important to note you will not take masterwork legs. You'll take your Mauritania legs four from the elite toss for 50% more prayer and fire making XP. Masterwork degrades just like Torva degrades, which is really nice. You also want to augment your body and your Sun Spear, and you want to add perks to those. The perks are right there too. I have Scavenging Free and Biting Free on the top. Biting is so useful, especially if you want to have Zerk in your rotation. It allows it so you crit enough after a Meteor Strike to consistently hit it. Scavenging again is just so useful for all of those components. It saves you so much money in the long run. When it comes to my Augmented Sun Sphere, I have Precise 4 Equilibrium 2 and Aftershock. If you don't have a P4E2, get P3E2 and that's fine. If you can't make Aftershock, switch Aftershock out for Scavenging on your weapon and get something like Impatient on your armor. When it comes to the other pieces of my setup, I have a Zealot's Amulet. This Zealot's Amulet makes your Leech Curses stronger than a tier 99 prayer where you have 100% accuracy. Because Viwatch have a low defense and you're 100% accurate to them, a Zealot's with Leech Strength here is fantastic. Also, Cinderbanes can poison them, so they're very good gloves as well. I have a Rune Pouch with all my Alks in it, and then I just have a Passive God Book and a Luck of the Dwarves sitting there. When it comes to my Yak inventory, you can see that underneath the perks. This Yak inventory is for multiple hours at once. I have some Congealed Blood and Javelins as they're quite uncommon and I just drag them into my Yak's inventory whenever I get them in my inventory and it saves some space. Then I have Replenishment Potions and more Yaks. Replenishment Potions are super useful to do whenever you Meteor Strike or something or whenever you're renewing your Yak because you're gonna need Restores anyway to get your summoning points back for your Yak. You might as well pop a Replenishment Potion here and there while you're looting in order to get that extra Adren to give you more experience an hour. When it comes to Overloads, I take Supreme Overloads, but you can take whatever ones you want. If you would rather take Holies or sign, do that. The bar setup is right there as well. I would personally recommend using this bar if you have Biting or Impatient. If you don't have Biting or Impatient, it may be a bit hard to get to Zerk like consistently every time, but it should still work okay, just not quite as effectively. So when it comes to your auras, I would always recommend Salvation, Corruption, or Harmony. The reason why Salvation, Corruption, and Harmony are so good here is because whenever you gain Prayer XP, it gives you Prayer Points back. And because you're killing Vyas all the time, you're getting a lot of Prayer XP, so it keeps your Prayer up fully. If you have Tier 3 or 4 of the Salvation, Corruption, or Harmony, you can use Zealots with Leech Strength for Tier 3. And if you have a Tier 4, you can use Leech Strength and Leech Defense. That pretty much makes it so it's like impossible to die. So if you only have tier 1 or 2 Salvation, Corruption or Harmony, I would recommend a Brawler's Blood Necklace with Soul Split for tier 1. And tier 2, I would use Soul Split and Turmoil. You cannot keep Zealots and the Leeches up with anything under tier 3. Same applies with Penance. If you're using Penance, I'd recommend using just Soul Split and a Brawler Necklace. 
if you have a lot of wires on you, you may be able to use turmoil too. Then as you can see, the experience an hour is right there as well. You want to expect between 80 to 120k farm an experience an hour, 245 to 280k fire make an experience an hour, 350 to 400k prayer experience an hour, and 550k to 620k melee XP an hour, or range or mage, whatever you're using. The Luck of the Dwarves can also be imbued for extra stats. It gives plus two in every stat with techie from raids. Spring Cleaner, you need to make sure you have at least these two things active. The things that the Viawatch drop on their normal drop table are the two that have been highlighted. But for me personally, I'd highlight all of the rune items because you can get things like the huge plated salvages from rare drop table and stuff. And your Spring Cleaner can out those, which is really nice. That is it for the setup. I know it was a very long explanation, but you know, like I said, feel free to pause it here if you feel like you're missing anything. Most of it is self-explanatory and it shows it in a good way. Now on to talking about the spawns of the Vire Watch. When it comes to the Vire's layout setup, it's going to look something like this. And I know it looks a bit confusing, but I'm going to speak through it. When it comes to each of the houses, there should be two yellow dots in every house that is labelled on this map. If there's any more, that means a Vire's stuck in there and you should kill him while setting it up. We have the NPCs marked blue who don't aggro or anything, so when you see those yellow dots on the map, it's fine. You have the fixed spawns, which are in red. Those fixed spawns will always just stay there. So if you see those on your map, that's fine too. The extra spawns marked in orange are just about in your aggro range, which is really nice. She can get six fires on you at the same time, which is insane. Also, if you open up the door to your west, you can actually get two more fires on you, which means you can have eight fires on you at the same time. Nutty XP. When it comes to the green ones, they're just your normal spawns that will spawn all around you, crowd you around you, and you'll just DBS them down. So as long as you set up your world right, you'll have at least six fires on you, which is just so good. Let me show you how I set up a world. When it comes to setting up your Vire Watch, you want to make sure you're wearing house dragon robes. This will stop the Vire's aggroing on you and you can freely set up your world. When you get to Darkmare, you want to check to each side of the big mausoleum bit to make sure there's no Vire's hiding around there. Then you want to run to the house to the west and make sure there's no more than two Vire's in here. Two Vire's is how many you want. If there's any more, kill them. Run to the north and down the stairs and see if there's any level 98 Vire Watch stuck up there. They can get lured a long, long way. If they're all level 91, that's fine. If there's any level 98s, kill them. There should be around two via watch over here, though. One will be able to be lured to you sometimes, and the other one will get stuck, so don't worry about that one. And then one's an NPC. Continue down south. Once you get to the south, you want to kill anything that is trapped. Open up the door to the house to the west. If there's fire watch in here, that's fine. They can all be lured as long as the door is open while you're setting up. If there's any that are staring at a wall or behind the door or something, kill those to reset their position. This one over here, he's staring at the door. This one's definitely our position because he's just sitting there staring at the door and literally stuck. Kill him so he's not stuck anymore and he'll respawn to the south. Once he's said, just check the south to see if there's any other fire watch. And if there isn't, you're all good to go. That one that I just killed respawned literally right there. So at least you know that he's not stuck anymore. Now this is all done, you go back to the bank chest, do your preset and get ready to go to the tree. When you're at the tree, you'll then be able to set up the via watch as I showed in the screenshot and you should have six fires on you. And if you continuously open the door, you'll have around seven to eight consistently. It's amazing. Once you've set up all your vias, you can just AFK here with your Salvation, Aura, or whatever you've got. Use your Leech Curses with your Zealots and DPS them down. It is so, so awesome to do. You can also drop one of the stack of your items to area loot underneath of you so you don't even have to move. The downside with Vyres is as soon as they touch you with their first hit, they will continue to stand there. So if you stand out of position, especially as melee, the Vyres are all going to be out of position as well. So make sure you're standing here, and if you want to loot, drop sign underneath of you to pick it up. Don't move around to loot, because you'll mess your Vyres spot up. Just stand here, AFK, Revo++, and win. There's only one extra thing you can do for more XP, but it's less AFK. Every 5-10 to 10 minutes, the door to your west will close. Those two Vyres can come out of that room if the door's open. If it's closed, they stay there. So if you surge over there, you can open up the door and just get more experience an hour with two extra vias coming out. 
Doing this every five to 10 minutes whenever the door closes makes it more rewarding, but less AFK. And you have to get back into your position. So like here, what I do, I just walk southwest, surge over, open up the door and run back as soon as possible. If you line of sight the vires on the tree, you can get them back into position pretty quickly. If there's one or two vires out of position, quickly DPS them down, kill them, get back in your position and keep going. So yes, it's more work, but it's more XP. So you choose what you want to do. I very recently made a loot from 24 hours of AFK and Viawatch using this setup and this method. It's very consistent GP and XP. I'll leave a link to that video in the description if you're interested in checking that out. And that'll be it for this video. Hopefully this guide was helpful to you. Yeah, it's a pretty high end way of getting XP, but it's just so efficient in so many stats. Do give the video a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new for loads of future content. And until next time, see ya.